Hey, welcome to Integrative Preparedness. I'm Steve Smith. <clears throat> well, it is a beautiful morning. Uh, welcome to all the new people who are joining up both on YouTube and on Patreon. It's great to have you here. I'll say something about yesterday's in just a minute. Um, talking about city versus country. Uh, I was going to, uh, when I got up today, I was thinking ever since last night that uh, I was going to make one about how you'll die in uh, in SHTF, grid down, Tiatwaki, whatever. Um, and that's an important one. Maybe I'll make that one tomorrow. But today, um, <clears throat> I just it's a beautiful day, and I had to, especially after yesterday's, I wanted to talk about living a beautiful life. I've turned around here. Usually I have the camera pointed in the other direction, so you just see the front of my my front door or something like that, but I'm hoping that you can see the beautiful trees behind me. Uh, I don't know if the sun's washing it out. I can't tell by looking in the, in the viewfinder here exactly what it, it looks like to you, but I hope you can because they are just beautiful. And that was one of the many things that made me want to uh, talk about this. Uh, yesterday's, I'll say a word about yesterday's, when I put up the city versus country, I, I figured that most people would think, and I think probably most did, that I was going to talk about where it was best to live, whether that be city or country. And, of course, that wasn't it at all. Uh, it was about not prejudging people for where they live because we get a lot of that uh, in, in the preparedness community. And, and uh, it's, it leads people down the wrong road. Well, I always say that I have the smartest, and most intelligent, well-spoken, well-expressed uh, viewers and commenters on YouTube, and I think that yesterday's, once again, uh, proved that out. Uh, the comments were, were great. I expected to get a bunch of hate, to be honest with you, because I always get, um, well, I, I don't always, but I often get um, comments from people that say, you're an idiot for living in a city. If you live in a city, you hate yourself and your children and God and everything else. You know, And that is just so silly. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I leave them up, sometimes I take them down because I just don't allow my life to be cluttered with that kind of stuff. And, and I don't need that kind of comments to boost the algorithm um, and, you know, whatever. And that kind of gets to my point. Now, but most people who, who, who watched that video uh, and made, the, oh my gosh, I wish I'd turned it around because I'm just staring at two of the most beautiful orange roses you have ever seen in your life. I didn't notice that before. I would have let you see them. Sorry. <coughs> uh, but most of the commenters uh, came right back and understood exactly what I was saying and, and gave their points of view and uh, many agreed. You know, and it has nothing to do with where you prefer to live. It, nothing at all. I love living in the suburbs. I love living in the country in a different way. I loved living in the city when I was younger in a different way. Uh, so it's not about that. It's about, and, and I, can, I can write and I can tell you how to survive in each one of those areas. And, and yes, it's possible in any one of those areas. <clears throat> Uh, regardless of what the guy says. Well, you think you're, you know, in your big fancy house and you'll be overrun in a week and they'll take all your rice and beans. Well, okay. Maybe we'll get that. Though I wrote about that in one of my books. <clears throat> uh, but but that was a good, good response. So thank you all for your, for your intelligent and thoughtful responses on that. <clears throat> because it really is about looking at people. How you look at people and what biases are affecting your life. And, uh, you know, a, a bias, well, I'm not going to get into that, but just just be careful, you know, because it, it can be destructive to, to the person who holds it, not just to the people against who it's directed. It can be destructive to the person who holds that bias. <clears throat> well, that brings us to living a beautiful life. And, and I want to talk about that because I think that's important. Uh, it's not just, you know, in, in preparedness, everybody, I, I think too many people sacrifice today uh, for, uh, against uh, the worries of tomorrow, um, you know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong, I mean, preparedness is important, preparedness is biblical, uh, 
um, as I've talked about in the past, or the stories of Joseph, you know, of Noah, of uh, Jesus himself telling his, his disciples to sell their garment and buy a sword. It is, is an important part, and if we do it according to God's direction, it's a positive. If we do it out of fear, and if we do it because we're so dissatisfied with, with the today that we're living, that we're hoping for somehow catastrophe to bring us a better life, then that's unhealthy. And it's not going to be productive. And you're going to, to continue to see life through a negative prism. And, you know, we have a tendency to see what we look for. And if that's what you're looking for, uh, that's, that's going to have a negative uh, impact on you. And so I would suggest that you not, you know, another thing that, that Christ himself said is sufficient under the day are the, are the worries or the cares thereof. Uh, you know, prepare for tomorrow, but live today. And you should live uh, a, a joyful, full life today. Um, I know that a lot of people are living lives of, of worry and of tension and of stress. And you don't have to look very much around the world to understand that that's understandable, right? Um, I don't, to be honest. I don't live a life of stress. Uh, I, I, yeah, I've been in stressful situations. I've, I've been in stressful situations recently. And you know what they're caused by, don't you? People, okay? These kinds of things are caused by people. Um, and how you relate to it, or how you, you know, how you relate to worries if you allow them to creep into your life. <clears throat> I learned a long time ago, you know, back in my 20s, when I also, you know, I, I went on the police department when I was 21. I got into special units about five years later, and in cases to where the, the uh, stress level was extremely high, and the the alcoholism rates were off the charts, and the divorce rates were off the charts, and the, al and the uh, suicide rates were off the charts. And I realized, and I won't go into the, how I discovered this, that's probably a good subject for, a, for another video, but uh, I, I realized that, uh, that the things that were causing everybody stress, they had put themselves in, in that position, and everybody had a... Um, a choice, the ability to make a choice whether or not, you know, we all we all deal with the things we deal with, uh, but you can either be stressed out about them or you can not. Um, <clears throat> what, what makes a beautiful life? Um, understanding, recognizing, and appreciating the wonderful world around you, which in, can include people. It, it does not include many people, right, but it includes the people if you have brought the right people into your life, you know, it says, and I didn't mean for this to be a, a you know, too many biblical references, but I'll tell you what, the Bible is the best preparedness book there is. Uh, this is the day the Lord hath made. Every day you get up, this is the day the Lord hath made. Rejoice and be glad in it. I have to admit that I'm able to do that every day. I know that not everybody is. If you're not, I'm not here to, to say that you're, you know, I'm not here to uh, con condemn the way that you're living your life or anything. I'm saying that it can change and you should change it and you have to change it if you want the beautiful life the Lord has uh, for you. Um, and, and again, um, I, I'm sorry. I, uh, I have a, a couple of videos that are over on the church channel. If it's about worries and faith and things like that. So that's what it's all about. If you'd care to, to go see that over at Stonemont Church. If I remember, I'll put the link down here. Um, but when you recognize that each day is full of beauty, then you will see the beauty in it. If you decide that the world and your day is full of worries, you'll see the worries in it. You have to cast that off and you have to put faith in God. And you have to seek His will. And his, it, I guess this is getting into a, to a religious, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm not sorry. 
I, I, I just, I say that in the, I didn't mean to mislead anybody and, and to make anybody think that you're being sucked into it, but I'll tell you what, this is some of the best stuff you can hear. Um, I got up today, <coughs> went to the doctor yesterday, it's an experience for my last my last annual checkup under the corporation that I'm leaving, and that I'm already form I'm not formally gone from it, but I'm physically gone from it. And that's another story I'll tell on another one. <clears throat> and uh, it, it, if I was stress-free before, man, I am 10 times more stress-free now. Uh, but I went to the doctor, and, uh, you know, they were, they were expecting, well, they see my age, you know, 67, 68 years old, almost 68. And uh, they're looking at my chart. You're not on any medication? No. Nope. You're not on any scripts? Nope. Your blood pressure is perfect? Yep. Uh, well, we got to take your labs. We're sure that we're going to be able to find something wrong. You know, they don't say that, but that's what they're thinking. And uh, and I just got a call. And I got up today. Uh, let me back up for just a rewind for just a moment. For you new people, I do this a lot. You know, but my mind works faster than my mouth. Uh, people t- say I talk slow. That's true, I do. Um, <clears throat> so I got up today, <clears throat> got the kids off to school, cooked some uh, sausage and eggs, and I'm working on my second cup of coffee. I almost forgot if you would if you'll excuse me for a sip here. Ah, I love it. This is my second cup. And, and then I got a call from the doctor's office, and he says, uh, Stephen, uh, we got your labs back, and whatever you're doing, he says, you're already in good shape, <clears throat> but your numbers, you know, your lab numbers, your whatever, uh, are even better than last year, so whatever you're doing is working. And so I told them what I was doing, and I won't say that here. I, I think it's worth another video. I'll tell you, uh, I'm in great shape. Uh, and I'll tell you how, how to do it. Um, but that's not for this. So I got that news, and then I decided to come, and I'd already decided to talk about what a beautiful life it is and what a beautiful world it is. Um, and that just the next topic, and now I'm waiting for my crew to come, and we're going to go out and do some, some Christmas lights on houses, and it's going to be even better because, you know why? Because I'm around great people. I got great kids off to the school, I kissed a great wife on her way over to work to book fair at the at the uh, school, and she'll be joining us on a job site later, and I'm waiting for two great people to come work with all day long. How do you get better than that? Well, it just doesn't fall out of the sky. You see, these are the, these are the results of conscious decisions. You have to be the keeper of your life. You have to be the keeper of your life under the direction and protection of God. There's no other way. There's no other way for real happiness. Now, there are people who live lives of peace from uh, other um, philosophical points of view, shall I say, Um, who, you know, outside the Christian religion. And so I'm not putting that down at all. But what they have in common is that they release the stresses of the world and they center themselves on the things that they know are important and they don't fill their life with trash now i come at it as a christian i come at it from a christian perspective i find my peace in god and jesus christ they have sustained me and provided for me and protected me and directed me for the last 40 five years and I find no replacement for it if that's your thing you know what I'm talking about if it's not your thing I would highly suggest that you look into it as I said I have a channel over at Stonemont Church feel free to come over and watch there's not a lot of videos up there yet but there there will be a lot more Um, but it's it's your life and whether it's full of of stress and whether it's full of mess and whether it's full of negativity or whether it's full of peace and happiness and joy the way God meant you to live a life is the result of the decisions you've made now if 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 you need to improve that a little bit all you have to do is make different decisions because 
there's no reason to go through life unhappy. And that doesn't mean you're not going to have problems, okay? Uh, it, it just means that as you go through those challenges, I prefer to look at them as challenges. I, I tell people, hey, if money is the solution, it's not a problem, right? And, and there are others that, you know, a, a medical situation or whatever are different. But even in those, your faith <clears throat> keeps you at peace. And if you can be at peace during times that just frazzle the dickens out of most people, what's greater than that? What What is that beginning line from If by Kipling? If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, right? So often isn't that the case. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. I love that's my favorite poem. I won't bore you with the rest. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, go look up If. You'll love it. Uh, but but these are, your life is a culmination of the decisions you've made, what you've allowed into your life, and what you have built into your life. If you have low expectations of yourself, of, of people, of whatever, if you think that all people are horrible and you're just going to have to put up with it and life sucks and all that, well, I'll tell you what, your life's going to suck. And, uh, and that's a shame because, I mean, your, your, your life is a gift from God. What are you doing with it? Uh, but, but, you know, if, you're, if your life is, if you've got the right, if your, if your standards are high, and you, not, not that you condemn other people, but you only allow the right ones in your life. And you expect things of your, the right things. You know, that doesn't mean, I got to make a certain amount of money. You know, if, if you're wound up about money, if money is what makes you happy, you're never going to be happy because there's never going to be enough. You know, uh, some of the happiest times in my life is when I've been the most broke. Uh, but, but if you do that, if you keep your expectations high for yourself, for the people around you, and for life, and stay slowed down, and don't allow the morons of the world who will try to throw mess into your life right and left, you keep that out, you're going to have a happy life. You're going to have a fulfilled life. You're going to have a peaceful life. And you're going to have a life that uh, is the way God meant you to, to live it. So... As we prepare for whatever comes down the road, we don't know what's coming. It could, I mean, for crying out loud, you know, uh, things are being thrown at us right and left, right? And left. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's not, like the old saying, it's not, life isn't what you make it, it's, what you, it's, it's how you take it. Well, that's not entirely right, but, that, you know, there's a good kind of a, a thought in there. Um, don't let this wind you up. Don't let this get you so incensed and so you know, uh, on the edge that it is destroying the quality of your life now. Live this day. Live this life. See how beautiful the world is. See how beautiful life is if you look for the good and if you look for the beauty and if you keep out the trash keep out the trash and if you find you've got trash in your life get rid of it get rid of it you know Donald Trump once said I think it was in his first book I read his first book when it first came out any of you Trump haters just sit back and relax um, if you think that Trump is it no yeah I don't think whatever uh, in his first book I'll tell you what he's a smart guy whether you like him or hate him, he's a smart guy. I read his first book when it first came out a long, long time ago. And one of the things that I remember he said, it's uh, your problems are not caused by the people that you fire. They're caused by the people who you don't fire. I've found that in business over the years to be true. And it's the same in your life. Your problems are not caused by the people you get rid of. It's caused by the people you don't get rid of. And it's caused by the problems you don't get rid of. Okay. Um, I think that'll do it for, for today. This is just, it, it's a beautiful day. 
It's a beautiful life in a beautiful world for those who will accept looking at it that way. And that doesn't mean that I won't take somebody out if they threaten it. I am, I am no Pollyanna. I am no person that allows anybody to roll over. Okay. Just don't come into my life and try to disrupt it and everything will be fine. But by keeping that stuff out, I find that every one of my days is full of joy. I would, I would hope that every one of yours is full of joy. And uh, these are kind of the, the ways to get at it. Again, for, uh, for any of you who are kind of going through some worries, or, uh, you know, it's about faith. It's about worry. And I think there's a couple over there. I, I will. I'll remember to put the, the link to Stone Rock Church down here. Just go, but I'm not trying to recruit anybody into the church or anything. Just if, if that's a message that you think could help you, go check it out. So, I'm going to finish this cup of coffee, sit out here, watch these trees get even prettier as the sun gets higher, wait for my crew, and go out and have a beautiful day. And I hope you all do too. And remember that we prepare well today in order to live well tomorrow. Preparing well means filling our lives with as much of the good stuff as we can. Getting rid of that other stuff. All right. Okay. You all have a good day. I'm going to finish this. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.